Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Cupid. I am your host, Marla Martinson, and today I'm with Allison Carmen. Hey, Allison. Hi, Marla. How are you? I'm great. So, you guys, Allison was a lawyer. She was practicing law for 15 years, but she found hope and freedom when she discovered the mindset of maybe. Today, Allison works as a life coach and business consultant with a wide array of clients from entrepreneurs and executives to artists, designers, attorneys nannies, parents, and more. She's a speaker and a blogger, and her writing appears on the Huffington Post and in Psychology Today, and she wrote this amazing little book called The Gift of Maybe. I love it. <laughs> so this is a really great book for our times right now, Finding Hope and Possibility in Uncertain Times. I mean, here we're seeing all these terrorist attacks and, and, you know, illnesses and all these things happening on the planet. Um, so uh, how, tell us a little bit about this, uh, how maybe can help us and how your story a little bit, um, because that's going to help us, you know, deal with this kind of stuff, because you really lived it and figured out kind of this, this way to navigate it. Well, I always say that I was addicted to certainty, and if I didn't know what was going to happen next in my life, I projected things were going to be bad, or things weren't going to work out. And I think a lot of us do this. I think we're so afraid of the unknown, and we see the unknown as our enemy, that what we do is we write stories about what needs to happen for us to be okay. We could write a story like, I'm going to have get this client, and then my business is going to soar. I'm going to have this amount of money in the bank when I'm 50, and then life's going to be great. Or my child's going to get into this college and, and they'll have a wonderful life. And we hold these stories so close to our heart that eventually we believe that that's what needs to happen for everything to work out. But then life is uncertain. And sometimes we don't get that client. And we don't have that money we thought we had. And our, client does, our child doesn't get into that school. And then we start to spin out of control. And we say life's not working out. And what we do is we, we worry and we suffer. And we actually shut down for any new possibilities. And that's how I lived my life. I was so worried all the time when things didn't work out as I planned. And I thought I was doomed. And I thought things weren't going to work out. And I suffered. And I went on medication. And all these things happened to me. And then one day I heard this beautiful story about this farmer. And this farmer had this horse and it ran away. And his neighbor came by and said, you have the worst luck. And the farmer said, maybe. And the next day the horse came back with five mares. And the neighbor came by and said to the farmer, you have the best luck. And the farmer said, maybe. And the next day the farmer's son is on the horse, falls off and breaks his leg. And the neighbor comes by and says, you have the worst luck. And the farmer says, maybe. And the next day the army comes to take his son to war, but they can't take him because his leg is broken. And the neighbor comes by and says, you have the best luck. And the farmer says, maybe. And when I heard that story, I actually felt a pop in my chest. And for the first time in my life, I felt hopeful. I felt life had possibility. Just because we don't like what's happening in this moment doesn't mean it won't change in the next. And with this idea of maybe, uncertainty became my best friend. It became the place where I recognized that life would change and everything I wanted existed in the unknown. And maybe what was happening in my life right now was good. Maybe it would get better. Or maybe I would be okay no matter what. And it sounds so simple. It's one little word. Right. But it takes right. you from this cramped place in your mind where you believe that things are not possible and you're doomed and you're stuck. And it brings you to this open feel where you recognize life has possibility. Things change. I have hope. And life has maybe. And that's how the whole thing happened. And, that, and that's what I practice every day. Wow. And then you were able to get off medication and all of that because of that switch? That's that long. Well, the medication quite didn't work out for me. So I went from medication to alternative type therapies. But it didn't matter. Whatever I did, yeah. the minute something uncertain happened in my life, I spun out of control. So the yoga, everything was wonderful. But the uncertainty got me every time. Right. And I think that happens to a lot of us. We just want to know because we think if we knew, life would be better. But we really don't know. And not knowing is okay because not knowing is a place where we will be more creative and life will change and we will end up achieving our goals if we're willing to find the strength to just lean into it. And and that's really how it works. Yeah, I remember in 2009 when I left my job, it was kind of, I was there seven years, great job in Beverly Hills, health insurance and all that. And 2009 we had that depre the crash or what the recession and I had a it was one of those take this job and shove it moments where you know the boss you I was up against a wall and it was either you know like I, I gotta get out of here and I quit my husband was freaking out what are you doing in a recession you don't have money saved you're what are you crazy and a friend of mine uh, who was a, a spiritual practitioner said sometimes the universe has to pry us out of 
a current situation to open up another door. And I was in that uncertain spot. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I was looking on Craigslist for $10 an hour jobs. Couldn't even get one of those. And then a few months later, I ended up starting my own business and did made double the money and am happier and work from home in my pajamas if I want. <laughs> but you found the courage to do that. You found the courage to look at uncertainty and say, okay, I can move forward. But what a lot of people do is they just totally shut down. Right. The unknown right. scares them so much that they're not willing to take chances. They're not willing to start new businesses. And they end up, and the worst part is, is the suffering. Because they end up suffering when they don't have that job in the moment. When their child doesn't get into the school in the moment. We're actually missing out on the best part of life. Because we're suffering in this moment where beautiful things are happening. It's just not happening the way we thought. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember, just because it's not how we think today doesn't mean it's not going to be great tomorrow. Yeah, and that's what it comes in. It's kind of that control. The, the control, right? Um, and and uh, talk. So I'm a matchmaker. So how do you use that in relationships? Because I know you talk about that to improve relationships, maybe with your spouse or whoever you're seeing. Well, well what's interesting is that often in relationships, what we're really doing is we're always carrying the past with us because we don't believe yes. it can be different. And even though we try our mind to say, I'm going to try really hard, it's hard to let go. And this little word of maybe offers you another possibility. Maybe things could be different with us today. Maybe what happened yesterday will never happen again. Maybe this is a new moment. Again, sounds so simple, but you're offering your mind another possibility. And the minute you do that, you logically think, hey, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe there is another possibility. So just like uncertainty, we lean more into the relationships. And I've seen a lot of people be able to shift relationships, heal relationships. I even remember Thanksgiving. I just made Thanksgiving at my house a couple of weeks back. And I was all stressed. You know, I have some tension sometimes with my sister-in-law. You can go really <laughs> off the rails sometimes, but then you just kind of go back to the practice. Maybe it's okay. Maybe what happened yesterday will never happen again. Maybe I can be different. That's another thing, too. We're also rigid about who we are, how we think, what we're capable of. Even that thought, well, maybe I can react differently in this moment. Again, we're just offering new possibilities for ourselves at every moment. And once we do that, life changes. Yeah, and the people that I talk to, a lot of times these singles, they'll say, well, um, even I sent a, a possible match for one of my male clients, and he says, well, but she's a redhead, and I dated two redheads in the past, and I don't know, I think somehow they have this, they think redheads have a different personality than other people, and I said, well, as a redhead, I'll let that pa comment pass, you know, <laughs> but, but just prejudging, or, well, I won't date a woman over 33, because a lot of them, then they start getting bitter and having baggage, or, well, so it's, like you said, all the past things, without thinking, well, maybe this person's different, they're taking all their past experience and making it a set, concrete rule now. Yes, we walk around thinking we know. Yeah. At the end, what that does is it limits us and it causes us to suffer. And, and that's really the game. You know, do we want to be limited by the past or do we want to live our best life? And the only way to live our best life is willing to open up to everything that we don't know. And then life changes. And then we meet new people. And then we have new love relationships. We start new businesses. But we're just so afraid we're not okay. We're just so afraid that life's not going to go our way. And that's why maybe it's this little, subtle, beautiful tool which you could always use to let go of the fear and open up again and again and again until you find the life or the love that you're looking for. Yeah, and, yes. and since when you coach people, I, I imagine a lot of it is, is um, about starting something new career-wise. Um, so I had never owned a business. I never thought I could, I didn't have any business training or a college degree. Uh, so in my, I think I was 47 or something when I started my business. I didn't know what the heck was going on, but it's just those little, little steps. And I think I said, well, why can't I, maybe I can other w women are doing it. Other people are doing it. So, um, how would you tell somebody to take those first steps to jump? Because I think people stay in jobs they hate and they're, they say, oh, if maybe if I could win the lottery, I could do something else. Or there, these things that are made probably never happen, but they really can do it themselves if they would just say, well, maybe I could try this and then try these little steps, right? Right. It's really interesting because you had that mindset. You had, and it's interesting, people either have faith and they're just totally okay with whatever happens in life, mm -hmm. or they have some religious beliefs, but most of us kind of were afraid of the uncertainty. So maybe like for you is this little bridge which takes us from this place 
that we're so scared, and it brings us over to a place of faith. And although we're using cognitive tools to get there, we're allowing ourselves to hang out in the unknown. So if someone came to me and said, oh, I want to start a business, but I don't think I'm capable of that, you know, first we question the past. Usually there's somebody told, you know, when you were a child, you can't do this, mm -hmm. or you're not capable of this, or maybe you had a bad experience at work. So this idea of maybe we kind of play with it, you start to realize, well, maybe the past, again, will never happen. Maybe this is a new beginning. Maybe I could take a little baby step. Maybe I can make a phone call and call a friend who started a business. Maybe I could take a class. And with maybe just, it starts and it, it builds this little platform where you start to believe that life can be different. And maybe you are okay. Again, we're just so afraid and fearful that life's not working out as planned because we don't know. But the minute we start to realize, well, not knowing has nothing to do with whether or not I'm going to achieve my goal. That's just the process. And the more we get comfortable with the process, the more likely we're going to find our way. And maybe such a beautiful tool to give the hope and possibility we need to persevere through the challenging times. Yeah, some, something else happened to me that's very interesting. I've always been into healing modalities and spiritual practices and learning about different things. And, and about maybe two and a half, three years ago, I went to, to uh, a shaman and I ended up, I was at this event and they were trying different modalities. I laid on his table and then I went and had a session with him and I said, wow, he's doing this energy work. He's got this drum, he's got this table and lights and then, wow, oh, I would love to do that. I would love to help people and be, be like him and do, but oh, the knowledge you'd have to know. How could I learn all that? Where would I learn it? How do you do it? I'm work, I'm a matchmaker, blah, blah, blah. One day I ended up at this little shop not far from my house looking for a little Buddha statue as a gift and I saw the, a flyer. They had some classes, $15 a class. I took my friend. We started going. I find out they give crystal healing classes and you can get certified. So I went. I got certified in crystal healing. Then from there I got certified in Reiki. Then I got certified in life force energy. Then Now I've got my table here, my crystals, my... I have some clients, I'm on a healing team. Cause just because I said, hey, maybe I could do that one day. I don't know how, but maybe I could. That's the key if you don't get stuck. Because when people don't know how, they think they can't do it. Right. And that's usually what people get overwhelmed. I have so many people that have this vision of what their life could be like. I, I want to start a baking business. I want to start a tech business. And they're like, but I don't know how to. Even though they have some, we all have some know-how. Right. We all right. have you know, wisdom, and but the fear just takes over and the fear shuts us down. Mm -hmm. So what maybe does, it allows you to approach life without the fear. And that's what you were able to do, and that's why you are able to start your business. So if we could just kind of calm the fear down, then we're going to let our wisdom lead us to more clarity, lead us to more opportunity. And like I said, again, it's one little word, but you have to ask yourself. I always say when someone wants to start a new job or wants to start a new business, if they came to me and said, I can't start a new business, and I would say, ask yourself the question, am I absolutely certain that I can't? Mm -hmm. No, no, we're not absolutely certain. And then start the maybe questions. Maybe I can do this. Maybe this idea is great. Maybe I'll be okay even if I fail. And that's another piece too. People also are afraid of failing. And we forget that even after failure, life goes on. Like let's say we tried this new thing. Let's say we opened this new business and we did fail. After that failure, life has maybe. Yeah. Maybe you'll learn some lessons. Maybe that was how you're supposed to spend your time. Maybe you'll meet somebody. Or maybe there's just another opportunity and it's not ready for another year and a half. Who knows? But again, there's always new beginnings. And this idea of a maybe reminds us of that. Right. right. And, um, and uh, as long as we're here on this earth, you might as well give it the best shot you have and just try whatever you can. What's the worst thing that can happen? It doesn't work out. People don't go to, they don't get to that question. Like to think they that, never get yeah. past this doom and gloom. I'm not okay. Things aren't working out. They never realize that, again, life has more openings after you fail or after you try this new thing. Mm -hmm. People are always shutting down because they're afraid they're not okay. And maybe remind us, maybe we are okay, and there's the open space, and there's the little light, and when people have a little light and a little hope, most likely they're going to persevere. Hopefully they're going to persevere. Right. And I think age in this country, ageism, you know, uh, but there's really no, I see so many people in older ages now opening businesses, starting th new things, um, getting into relationships. There's no limit as long as you, you're still walking around. <laughs> so you can, you know, as long as you're still functioning, right? As long as you still have a little bit of life force energy in you, you can get things done. Right. No, you have a beautiful perspective, but we have to be willing to hang out in the uncertainty. Uncertainty is not our enemy. The minute we start to see it as our best friend, life starts to change. And maybe it's a great you know tool to get you there because without that, we're just going to be like, how am I going to do this? I have no idea. And either we're going to have the spirit like you have, and we're just going to be totally open, We're going to need, or we're going to need a tool like maybe to get us through those dark times until we find the light. 
And I get scared too. When I was when I left my job, I was scared my boss would be mad that I I was competition. I was afraid he'd come after me. I was afraid, you know. There's all these fears, fears. Ooh, but but uh, you just kind of plow through. You just take that next step. Is that's right. all I can. You and know, you have to allow yourself to feel that. You know, we can't suppress our emotions. I remember once I read Norman Vincent Peale's book, The Power of Positive Thinking. I'm like, I'm going to be positive all day long, and no matter what <laughs> negative thought came up. I just suppressed it and I went to bed that night and I dreamt my mother died, my father died, my father-in-law died, my mother-in-law died. I woke up, fell asleep, had the same dream because what I was doing is I was suppressing everything and we, we have to allow ourselves to feel. But after a while, we allow it and then what are we going to do with it? And then that's the time we have to say, you know, maybe there's something else for me out there. Maybe there's a new perspective. Maybe I'm still okay. Maybe I could show up for this situation differently. And that's when we start to shift. We allow the emotions, and then over time we say, okay, well, maybe there's something else out there for me. And it's a beautiful thing when we're able to embrace life. That's for sure. And can you tell me one of your favorite stories from the book of maybe? Um, one of my favorite stories. Well, actually, this was not in the book, but it's one of my favorite stories about maybe, and it's about this fellow. And I gave him my book. I originally, I self-published the book. And then uh, Penguin Random House bought it um, a couple of months later. But when I self-published the book, I used to hand it out to everybody that I could. And this fellow just lost his wife. And I gave him my book. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, he needs some hope and possibility. And he read my book. And he came up to me and said, Allison, I hated your book. He goes, I just lost my wife. And my life will never change. And I remember going home that moment saying, wow, maybe there are limits to, to this philosophy that I had. And for a long time, I questioned. I said, okay, there's a time and place for everything. And two years later, he came up to me, and he said, Allison, thank you for giving me the book. He said, I, when I was grieving, I needed to grieve. I needed to be in that place. But after a period of time, I realized I'm still here. I still have breath. I still have life. And I actually said, maybe there's something left for me, for me to experience in my life. And I have two sons, and that idea of maybe allowing me to show up for them. And today, he has a girlfriend. And it doesn't mean he loves his girlfriend more than he loved his wife. It merely says that in life, what's in every moment, there's something left for us to experience. And with this idea of maybe we're going to show up that way, even if it's not what we expected, and even if it's not exactly what we wanted, at least with maybe we're going to squeeze out whatever's left in life. And for him, it allowed him to embrace a new beginning. And like I said, it doesn't mean he doesn't miss his wife, but he's still here and he's making the best of what he does have. And that's really one of my favorite maybe stories. And it also surprised me too, because for a long time, I, I thought that I had given him this book and it, it was a mistake but I guess in life there are no mistakes there are only maybes so 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 this leads us this is a good segue into book everybody wants to write a book right and I'm writing my fifth book right now it's going to be done hopefully this month right. and um, I've been traditionally published and self-published uh, there's, I mean, I think on Amazon, like 8 million books now and, and everybody I meet says, Oh, I want to write a book. And then how do you do that? Or uh, so, and I tell them, just look, if you even wrote one page a day or half a page a day at the end of a year, you'll have a whole book. You don't have to sit. It's daunting to think you have to sit down now. Then they think the whole publishing thing has changed. So this is very interesting. You self published. And then like two months later, you got a big publishing deal. How did this happen? What was right, the Well, well, <laughs> Actually, I started off with an agent. Um, well, I'll back up. I started off at a lunch many years ago, and a guy threw me his card and said, when you want to write your first book, call me. He was a publisher in London. So I went home, and I was really excited, and I sat down on my computer. I knew nothing about writing a book, but you know, I had my philosophies. I wrote everything down. I handed him the book, and he's like, you either need to take a writing class or you need an editor because this is not working. And, and because I was in the maybe mindset, I didn't really judge it. I was like, okay, because what we do is we judge it. This is not working out. He didn't buy the book. I have failed. And instead of that, I embraced maybe. I was like, well, maybe this is a good thing because I would have never sat down and, and written a book, mm -hmm. and maybe I'll find an agent. So I, I decided to write a book proposal, and I landed an agent. And the agent was like, oh, yeah, let's send the book out. We'll send the book out. So we sent the book out. In the book, in the book that I wrote, I think I, I mentioned I was rejected 25 times. But after my book came out, I realized it, I counted I was rejected 45 times by the big publishers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And again, I, I never took the rejection as something was wrong. I always took the rejection as, okay, what do I need to look at? Is there something else I can do? Maybe there's something else. And I just stayed with the process, and I ended up self-publishing. My agent didn't know what to do with me. I called, and she was a very mainstream agent, and I called her up one day, and I'm like, I'm self-publishing. And then I, you know, I self-published, and things weren't really happening, and then I gave my book away for free for three days on, um, I think it was Kindle Select. Mm -hmm. And 30,000 people downloaded my book, and I went on the bestseller list, and then I moved on to the bestseller, paid bestseller list after that, and like that, 
I had three offers and I ended up at Penguin Random House. Oh, but it was a process. Uh, we have to remember, life is filled with maybes, but we're always judging it because we thought that if I do this, this will happen. If I do that, this, and when it doesn't happen the way we thought, we're like, it's just not working out, but maybe it is. And for me, I can't imagine another path because I got rejected so much, I started to blog. Mm -hmm. And my blogging life has landed me on Psychology Today, Mind Body Green, MariaShriver.com. There's, my blogging life is just as important to me as my book and my speaking engagements. So it unfolded in such a beautiful way. And I feel so lucky. But without maybe, I probably would have shut down it after that guy, the first guy rejected my book. So now publishers will, because I don't think they used to take, if you self-publish, they're not going to take you after that. But now I think they will. They see, okay, she self-published, she's really selling, we want her, and then they'll take the book, right? Right, and and you know, and sometimes your self-published book is the better way to go. I mean, you know, there there's I, mainstream publishing is great. I mean, public, you know, having a big publisher did open a lot of doors for me. I, I've done a ton of media this year. I've had a lot of opportunities, but you know, self-publishing has its its merits as well. So you know, again, we're wanting, we're thinking the big publisher is going to open the door and save us, but maybe self-publishing is the road. So even that we have to be open to. It's not just one way, and that's what we think. We think life's going to be A or B. That's and right. We have that right. And I, I think two things on that. One thing I just wanted to quickly ask you, when you put it on the free, because there's a lot of people who write books that will see this, you put it on free, how, and so many people downloaded it. Did you go on all these other platforms to let people know it was free because there's a lot, or did you just put it up there? Oh, no, I, I, I sat down on my computer, and I'm like, who can I tell that I'm giving my book away for free? And it wasn't the exact same book. It was, uh, it's been edited since, but, yeah, the original version, anybody. I just sat down, and wh whoever I could let know, I did. And there were a lot of great opportunities, a lot of great sites that will let people know that you're actually giving your book away for free. Right. And I, I just I had a good couple of days. It was, it was amazing. I, I just kept going on. It was like I was, you know, I just couldn't believe it was happening. But that's what maybe <laughs> does. It allowed me to just embrace everything that I possibly could. And again, we just have to watch the, the thing that we have in our mind. We think we know, and that's why we limit ourselves. The minute we admit we don't know, we embrace the maybe, and when we embrace the maybe, so much more is possible in our lives. And the book is actually, it proves that. Because I had no, when I self-published, I thought that's how, the, I had no idea that I was going to have Penguin Random House publish, you know, my book months and years, a year later. Oh my gosh. Now, and I will say though, as a, as a writer, anything that you do creative, uh, to go into it just because you want to share what you have, not to have that mindset of I'm going to be number one or I'm going to make a million dollars. Because when you're going just with that mindset, that can make you crazy. And that you yeah, just write. Yeah, it's one way thinking. That's yeah. one way thinking. And we, we don't realize, we, sometimes we also don't know what, the um, the end game really is. We think we know, but for me, every single day I wake up and I pray, may I help one person today? Yeah. And and then you never know. When you're a writer, you never know who you help. Once in a while, you'll get a note from somebody, but if you're basing it all on sales, you're never going to be fulfilled, and you're going to stop the work. To right. stay inspired, every day I wake up and I pray, may I help one person? And maybe I help them on my blog. Maybe I help them on Psychology Day. Maybe they read my book, or maybe I help someone I passed on the street. Mm -hmm. I have, I'll never know. Yeah. And I just stay open to that. And if we're going to stay open, we're going to have the strength and the perseverance to carry on. Oh. Well, Allison, yeah. thank you for stopping by and sharing your philosophy of maybe. And you guys, you can get her book on, on Amazon, and I'm going to put all the links below. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you.